Hi, in the previous lecture we have been talking about that in order to get a good grasp on the World Wide Web, we have to construct our model and the model is a directed graph where the nodes are the websites and the connections are the hyperlinks basically. So okay, first we have to know the topology of the World Wide Web and this is why web crawlers came to be. There are several methods to traverse the graph. Basically, why do we need web crawlers? Because we don't know this directed graph at the beginning. We don't know the topology of the World Wide Web. So we have to make a graph traversal in order to find out this given topology. And there are several methods to traverse a graph. Breadth first search and depth first search. Usually we use breadth first search for web crawling. Depth first search has also lots of lots of applications, but in this case it is not that useful for web crawling. So what about breadth first search? Let's suppose the situation that we have a graph like this. We have a root node, the root node has three children, then the children may have several children and so on. We start with the root node for example. It's very important that we have to define the starting point where we are going to start or breadth first search graph traversing. Okay, first we visit it. Then we visit all the neighbors. We have three neighbors, B, F and G. So we visit all of them. Okay. Then we are going to visit the children of the children of the root. So for example, B has two children, C and D. So we are going to visit it. We just have to use a Q abstract data type in order to get all the neighbors. And we are able to visit all the neighbors of the neighbors, then the neighbors of the neighbors and so on. Then we have to visit the child of G, which is H, then to the next layer, which is E. So basically, breadth first search is going to visit the given graph on a layer by layer basis. As you may recall, we visited the first node, then we visited the second layer of the graph, then we visited the third layer of the graph, then finally the last layer of the graph. And this is why we like breadth first search. Because depth first search on the other hand is going to go as deep into the graph as possible and we don't want to do it for web crawling. Okay, so this is how breadth first search works and let's take a look at the concrete Java implementation. We are able to implement breadth first search and for example we start with the cnn.com and if we run this algorithm it's going to take a look at this website and basically it's going to find all the hyperlinks within this page and it's going to go along on that given hyperlink and that's why we are going to visit Twitter, YouTube and basically all the websites reachable from CNN.com. So if we run it, of course there may be several errors in the sense that a given URL is not available, it is not responding or something like this, but as you can see we are able to crawl the web and we are able to get a good grasp about the topology of the web, starting from CNN.com. Okay, as you can see there are lots of lots of websites available. For example, the github.com, developers.facebook.com and so on. Wikipedia, as you can see, imdb.com. Okay, so what does it mean? We are able to reach Wikipedia from CNN. So Wikipedia is quite an important website because CNN is an important website and CNN is pointing to Wikipedia and IMDB as well. WordPress.org, for example, as you can see. So this is how we get a good grasp about the topology of the World Wide Web and why is it important? Because this is how we are able to analyze that whether a given website is important or not. Okay, so this is how we use breadth first search. Thanks for watching.